Welcome back everyone, and thank you all for coming again for another Destiny 2 video. So today I want to ask you a question. What do you get when you combine a dot ticking and bone, such as the Monarch, with an exotic chest that provides more rift energy while within your own rifts? The answer? You'll get a very interesting instant rifts and grenade build forever. And boy, let me tell you, this build is absolutely nuts in content where you need to focus against singular adds, ultras, or in our example here, bosses to the point of being quite surprising as to how such a build that hasn't been talked about before. I know a lot of people when they talk about the Monarch say how fantastic the weapon is in both PvE and in PvP when combined with a hand cannon, and with this setup now, we have another viable method of fully utilising this underused weapon, to its full glory. This build here is a heavily focused DPS build at the end of the day for solo players, and is strictly for warlocks only because of the exotic chest piece being used to pull off the grenade regen. Hunters and titans, you can still use this build, however, you won't be able to use the full effect that the warlocks have, so I do apologise. But I do promise you, if you're someone that enjoys Gambit and wants a new DPS focused warlock build just for this, then this little beauty won't let you down. With the introduction out of the way, let's make a move onto the rest of the build. So the chosen subclass that we'll be using is the Entertainment of Grace, and within the subclass, we will be making full use of the empowering buff that is here to offer, and what it can actually do in our favour as well. So think of this, using Benevolent Dawn or Guiding Flame both provide a empowering buff that will speed up ability regen for you, or in this case of Guiding Flame, yourself. So on the get go, both of these abilities are great to switch in between the two. We then have Divine Protection and Well Radiance that can provide even more buffs and protection, and overall make any user a support in any role they take part in, you can both protect and heal, or empower, anyone is your choice. Although Bubble Titan has made its return and many players are seeing the better benefits that the World Dawn offers, compared to the Well of Radiance, the Well of Radiance still offers better supportive abilities overall, without the use of your super. Well, the Wall of Dawn only becomes useful when this super is up, but that's from my own experience. It might be slightly different to you, but from my experience, Wall of Dawn is more situational. You will use it more for the endgame bosses. While Wild Radiance, you don't have to actually use it there and then when it's available. You just use its offshoot abilities and still do well and perfect in whatever scenario you're in. However, the magic really comes from the empowering ability that can stack with Limonarch and Starfire Protocol, with some interesting results. You see, while empowered, you can trigger Starfire Protocol's exotic ability to gain grenades faster, which if you're used to standard kinetic or special weapons with those dot effects, then you'll get an average amount of grenade energy back. But with dot related weapons such as the Monarch Bow, we can increase the amount of grenade energy we get back per tick, but this only works while empowered. This leaves you with two scenarios, either use the energy gain to create a divine protection for you and your allies for further defences, or use it to kill other targets and gain your rift back instantly, while increasing damage. And I'll show you what I mean by that, as it sounds confusing but it's honestly incredibly simple and easy to do. Anyways, this subclass here is only one that can pull this all off, so sadly you can't switch for another subclass that might provide better offences compared to this option of defence but it should still be enough for you to do what needs to be done. And if you need to fight back, well, the tools that I will provide you should be enough. For your grenades, you will need diffusion grenades, which I know they're not as great as the one-shot stickies back in the D1 ever, where they had a bit more usage and oomph to them. But they are required as part of the setup. And for the exotic chest piece that we're using, it does offer us two extra fusions. So it's not a bad trade-off, but it could be better. Now for the weapons, you're going to need two specific weapons in your arsenal. One being the Limar Bow, of course, and two being the Wendigo Grenade Launcher for a special perk. Now let's start with the primary, and in this case here, I am rolling with the partial starter shotgun, simply for a backup weapon when I can't use my bow in close quarters fights, and then to combine that with the quick charge mod to activate the charge by light mechanic, and then also activate protective light as a fail safe when I hit critical. Now, the shotgun I've chosen doesn't have any special perks except for autoload and holster for instant reload, and the fact that it hits quite hard for an aggressive frame shotty. But except from that, using the perfect paradox as an example, with one-two punch, trench barrel, or even rampage if you want, 
will probably be a better option in the long run. To me personally, I've chosen this one shotgun specifically just for the autoload and holster, as overall, I can switch in between the two and still do fantastic damage without having to wait and auto reload my weapon there and then. Your secondary is and will be of course the Lil Monarch bow, which if you haven't got it yet, I would recommend you pick up a weapon bounty from Ada, rank it up and then go to the Gersio Forge for a slightly higher chance of unlocking it. It's 50-50. Bow is low key great because of his dot damage and all round great for mopping up ads in a singular or multitasking hit. Nothing more from there for the weapon as the perks are well suited for the bow, does good damage and nothing else for the weapon dot wise matches the damage output the bow can do. Lastly we have the Wendigo which is a fantastic grenade launcher which I recommend everyone try to get. Don't let the blast radius start for you as we can increase it via its perk Explosive Light, where collecting an orb of light increases the blast radius and damage by 70% per static round. For stats, we want to focus on two areas that we will be making full use of with the bow, which is recovery for faster rift regen for warlocks, and grenades that we can produce more on the fly. In our case for the rift, I didn't want to go too far as we have Starfire Protocol to help us, and most of our mods will bump up our rift speed as we normally play, so I chose to go around the 70 stat for recovery of a 59 second cooldown, which isn't too much, nor is it a overkill. Next we have discipline stat at 60 for a slightly faster grenade cooldown. Because of how the build works, this stat being at 60 is ideal for when you're not empowered or activating Starfire Protocol perk through normal play, as it will recover at a moderately good rate. But at the same time, it will provide just enough grenade energy that if you wish, you can focus in other stat areas such as resilience or strength for more usage in your Guiding Flame subclass perk. And speaking about resilience, the sweet spot for all builds should be 50, as it will allow you to survive encounters that at times could mean certain death. It's not guaranteed, but an extra hit point within the build can mean a lot in some cases. For armor, the Starfire Protocol is of course needed, and ideally our elemental one would be suited as you could put on a bow reserve mod for extra shots in reserve or a unflinching bow aim to where you get less flinch, but this is only recommended if you use this in PvP mainly. After that you will need to get 1 Arc Affinity Armor, 2 Solars and 1 Void Affinity Armor for the specific mods that are required. Moving on to the mods, we have the following, Head, Recovery and Crit Charge mod, Arm, Recovery and Blast Radius mod, Chest, Resilient, Bow Reserve and Molten Overload mod, Leg, Recovery and Protective Light mod, Warlock Bond, Concussive Dampener, Distribution and Guardian Angel mod. Now everything about the build seems to focus on recovery for the faster rift stat, but there's a reasoning my friend, and all that will pay off in terms of producing the highest amount of DPS you can offer from your end. For example, testing the build against the Ogre, who is ideal as he doesn't have any shields, has a large crit spot and is ultra tier. When we're not empowered and we just use our grenade plus bow combo, we get the following. Grenade Impact is 117 plus Grenade Explosion which is 17,414 equals 17,531. Now the Monarch Crit which is 5,169 plus Poison Spread which is 344 times 8 equals 7,921. Overall 25,452 damage overall. Good damage against Ultras and most bosses but nothing too overwhelming plus I used one grenade in that test and not two so the damage would be a lot more higher if we added in the second grenade. Once empowered now, we get the new following. Grenade Impact 117 plus Grenade Explosion 17,414 equals 17,531. Monarch Crit which is 6,203 plus Poison Spread which is 412 times 8 equals 9,499. Overall, 27,030. So it increases noticeable with an extra 2k added onto attacks when empowered. Once again, the many of you here may say this still isn't good enough. Why would I use this for Gambit or even any boss related content? Good question, because the test right there only showed if we did a combo once. What wasn't included was the ongoing duration if we did a combo into a rift or while Radiant ran out. So if we took our empowering rift duration which is 14 seconds and then times that by overall combo damage, that would equal 378,420, which is a lot. However, we won't really deal that amount of damage considering that a lot of factors have to be put into this. For example, the amount of time that would take us to pull and activate our exotic bow ability, and then also use a grenade at the same time, 
and then at the same time wait for our grenades to recharge and then we also have to interrupt about attacks that be coming into us or attacks being interrupted by invaders and etc etc so really this amount of damage there is not really what you're going to do in one sitting it's generally not possible i believe so let's dial that back by just a bit let's say times three the amount of times that we do the combo which overall would give us around 81k which is still very high and good but much more reasonable than long run when you think about it but like always this number can change depending on the type of modifiers applied to the game mode if the certain enemy we're facing has a certain resistance against our weaponry whether we're being interrupted by certain attacks uh, whether we're being invaded etc Overall, something like this is perfect against Gambit bosses though, as they're stationary, although sometimes do decide to take a stroll every now and then. But landing in power and crit shots with the bow and our grenades makes our life incredibly easy. And when done correctly, you can take off a good chunk of health from the first encounter of the boss from you alone. With a team with good weapons, that can equal at least one third of the boss's health. We also have to account that with our Sapphire Protocol Exotic, if we are empowered and use the Monarch to deal damage, we will get grenade energy back per tick. Yes, you've heard that right, per tick if we activate the Monarch Exotic ability, which overall means faster grenades and more damage over time. On top of that, we do also have the stagger effect against lower to ultra adds thanks to the poison, which can help with stunning them and giving us extra time to do more damage. Plus, with our mods such as Molten Overload, we can further lower down enemies' damage output for a few seconds with a grenade. Even more better to use it against bosses. And in case we get into a difficult situation where we take too much damage, we have Protective Light mod which, once we hit critical, we will receive a 50% damage reduction for the duration it provides. And we also have the Guardian Angel mod, something that not a lot of people actually use or generally talk about. But using it, on specific weapons, will drop healing orbs for you and your allies. And lastly, the Wendigo will provide us with extra damage boost when we need it most to melt a boss, very, very quickly. And of course I've got Well Radiance with its duration, damage resistance and damage increase. That right there folks will be the eye candy of the bill when you activate it and get to Primeval times 2 or times 3 or just use it against standard strike bosses. Sounds great right? Because it is and my win rate in Gambit has increased thanks to the DPS I can provide but not so much if you have a terrible team because you can only do so much on your end. But like all builds, they do come with their own downsides and the one that will stick out with this one is fighting back against invaders in Gambit, who will be using much more stronger or lethal weapons to one-shot you, aka truth because, well, that's the only thing people tend to use. There's also the fact that using the combo with Empowering Rift will put you in a very vulnerable situation in terms of taking damage, because if you don't have your super up and running, or if you don't have healing orbs available to recover your health, you can get wiped out in the blink of the eye. And yes, having protective light helps, but only so much. Luckily, that's the only threat the build will have on you. This is more of a gamut catered build for the boss DPS, but it's still amazingly effective against your everyday enemy to slightly tougher ultras. If you're looking for an effective warlock DPS build for Gambit, then I recommend you give this a try, but if not, then I recommend you give this one a world PvP. You'll be surprised as how effective it is. And if that's not good enough for you, then by all means mix and match it until you find something perfect for you. That's the whole point of building, right? So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub. And also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff. Link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one.